Have you ever wondered how ships are made? The journey from a dream to a magnificent vessel begins with a blueprint. This is the stage where naval architects, the unsung heroes of shipbuilding, step in. They are the masterminds behind the design of every ship. Their role is to plan out, in meticulous detail, the dimensions, structure and systems of the ship. Let's dive into it. Ever seen a ship? It's a giant, right? Now imagine this giant doesn't just appear out of thin air. It all starts with a plan, a blueprint. The naval architects first lay out the dimensions. They decide how long, wide and tall the ship will be. They determine the size of the ship's compartments, the engine room, the cargo holds and even the crew's living quarters. Next comes the structure. Naval architects design the ship's structure, ensuring it's strong enough to withstand the harsh conditions at sea. They decide where to place the steel plates, the bulkheads and the decks. They ensure the ship will remain stable and balanced, even in the roughest of seas. But the design process doesn't just stop there. The ship needs systems, lots of them. Propulsion systems to move the ship, navigation systems to guide it, communication systems to keep in touch with the world, safety systems to protect the crew and many more. Each of these systems is carefully planned and integrated into the ship's design. The importance of the design phase in the shipbuilding process cannot be overstated. It's the foundation on which the entire ship is built. A miscalculation or oversight at this stage could have serious consequences later on. That's why naval architects spend countless hours refining and perfecting their designs. Without a detailed blueprint, our ship would be but a dream. Let's move to the next phase. What happens when the design is ready? Once the blueprint for our maritime giant is complete, the real heavy lifting begins, the process of steel cutting. This is where the ship starts to evolve from a mere concept into a tangible entity. Large sheets of steel, as expansive as the horizon, become the canvas for our naval architects. These sheets are meticulously cut according to the design, forming the ship's components. From the towering hull to the intricate superstructure, every piece has a specific place and purpose. Each component is cut with laser-like precision, ensuring a seamless fit when assembled. This process is akin to creating a colossal jigsaw puzzle, with the added complexity of having each piece weigh several tons. The precision required here is staggering. A minuscule deviation could lead to significant issues down the line. But fear not, advanced technology and skilled hands work in harmony, ensuring every cut is spot on. Next comes the assembly process, where the cut pieces are welded together. This is where the ship's skeleton, its hull and superstructure come to life. Welders, armed with their bright torches, fuse these gigantic steel components together. Their work is an intricate dance of fire and metal, a symphony of creation played out on an industrial stage. The process is arduous and requires immense skill and patience. Each weld must be perfect, both for the strength of the ship and the safety of those who will eventually sail in it. Day by day, weld by weld, the ship begins to take shape. From a collection of steel components, it transforms into a recognizable form, a beast being born from the flames of creation. With the structure in place, our ship begins to take shape. But what's next? Our maritime giant is ready for the next stage, outfitting. This is where our beast starts getting equipped with all the systems and components that will make it a self-sufficient entity on the high seas. But that's a tale for another time. Opening. How does a mass of steel turn into a functional ship? Well, once the ship's structure is in place, it's time to get down to the nitty-gritty and start equipping our giant with the systems it needs to function. This process, known as outfitting, involves the installation of various components and systems that are crucial to the ship's operation. Let's start with the propulsion system. This includes the engines, propellers and related machinery that push our ship through the water. It's the heart of the ship, providing the power needed to traverse the oceans. Next up is the navigation system. This is the ship's eyes and ears, providing the crew with vital information about their location and the surrounding environment. It includes GPS for global positioning, radar for detecting obstacles and other tools to ensure safe navigation. Communication is key in any operation and it's no different on a ship. The communication system includes radios for local communication and satellite equipment for long-distance contact. This ensures that the ship can always stay in touch, whether it's with other vessels, the shore or even satellites in space. Safety, of course, is paramount. 
The ship is equipped with a range of safety systems including firefighting equipment, life-saving devices and emergency response systems. These systems are in place to protect the crew and the ship in case of any unforeseen incidents. In addition to these primary systems, the ship is also equipped with generators for power generation, HVAC systems for crew comfort and control systems for managing various ship functions. And let's not forget the final touch the paint job. Painting the ship not only enhances its aesthetic appearance but also provides protection against corrosion, extending the ship's lifespan and ensuring it remains in tip-top condition for its voyages. So there you have it. From a mass of steel, we now have a fully equipped functional ship ready to take on the challenges of the sea. But before it can set sail, there's one more crucial step to complete. Closing. Now that our ship is equipped and ready, it's time to face the water. What happens when the ship is ready to sail? Here's where the rubber meets the road, or rather, where the steel meets the sea. After all the designing, cutting, assembling, outfitting and painting, it's finally time to put the ship to the ultimate test. The launch is the first significant milestone in a ship's life. It's the moment when the vessel, which has been meticulously crafted on dry land, takes its maiden voyage into the water. The method of launch can vary from shipyard to shipyard, but commonly, the ship is either launched sideways or stern first. It's a moment of great anticipation and celebration, a testament to the countless hours of labor that have gone into its creation. But the launch is just the beginning. Once the ship is in the water, it's time for the sea trials. This is a critical phase where the ship's performance is tested under real-world conditions. It's a rigorous process designed to ensure that all of the systems we talked about earlier the propulsion, navigation, communication, safety, power generation, HVAC and control systems are all operating correctly. During the sea trials, the ship's speed, maneuverability, equipment and safety features are all put to the test. The ship is pushed to its limits to ensure it can withstand the harshest conditions it might face during its lifetime. It's like a final exam where the ship must prove it's ready for the open sea. These trials are a collaborative effort involving the shipbuilders, the owners, and often classification societies, which are independent organizations that develop and maintain technical standards for ships. Any issues identified during these trials are addressed and rectified before the ship is deemed seaworthy. What's fascinating about this phase is that it's not just about the ship itself. It's also a test of the skills, knowledge, and expertise of the people who've built it. It's a validation of their craftsmanship and a testament to their ability to bring a complex design to life. After successful sea trials, there's only one thing left to do. But we'll get to that in the next chapter of our voyage into the world of shipbuilding. What's the final step in the shipbuilding process? You ask. Well, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. The delivery of the ship. Once the sea trials are successful, it's time for the ship to begin its maiden voyage. The sea trials are not just a formality. They serve as the ultimate test, the final examination. Every system, every component and every function of the ship is put through its paces, rigorously tested to ensure that everything operates as it should. The propulsion system roars into life, the navigation system guides the way and the communication system ensures a constant link with the outside world. The safety systems stand alert, ready to combat any emergency, while the power generation system hums quietly, supplying electricity to every corner of the ship. The HVAC system ensures a comfortable environment for the crew, and the control systems maintain a tight grip on all ship functions. And when the ship sails smoothly, when every system performs flawlessly, that's when the shipbuilders know they have succeeded. That's when they know that their creation is ready to be delivered to the customer. The delivery of the ship is a moment of great satisfaction and accomplishment. Months, sometimes years of hard work and dedication have culminated in this moment. The ship, once merely an idea in the minds of the naval architects, is now a fully functioning vessel, ready to conquer the seas. The shipbuilders watch as their creation sails away, a sense of pride swelling in their hearts. They have not just built a ship, they have built a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance. They have turned sheets of steel into a seafaring giant ready to transport goods, carry passengers or perhaps even explore uncharted waters. And that, my friends, is how a ship is born. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Until next time, stay curious and keep learning.